Sometimes you write articles that don't perform the way that you want them to. And honestly, sometimes it's because they're not up to the quality of what you know how to do today. That certainly happens to us too. We have some articles on cookforfolks.com that were written early on on that website that are certainly not up to the quality of what I would expect to come from our writers today. And so we have an entire process of how to identify underperforming articles. Actually, we have a whole video about it that you can watch. I'll put a link to it in the description so you can go watch it later. But in that process, we identified some articles and I picked one today in part because I went to Google Search Console and I looked and saw that this article gets a ton of impressions, but not a lot of views. So today we want to revamp that article. But since Cook for Folks is really and a big project and because Nathan does such an awesome job of working with our writers, I'm actually going to have them walk you through our entire process of how we review an article, how you could audit it, and determine what needs to be changed, and then how to go about making those changes. Hey, hey Ricky, Ann and I are ready to go. Well, you're in good hands. All right, Ricky has handed this project off to us. Um, I'm really excited. Anna, of course, is heading up Quick for Folks, and I've been working on an auditing process. This is something we've been doing with our articles kind of informally for a long time, but we're making a process for this so that we can do it and also hopefully do it for your articles, but we're gonna talk about that later. As we go through this video, we're gonna be looking at a specific Cook for Folks article that we're going to audit, and I'm really excited to see what we can find to improve this article. We'd love for you to follow along for one of your articles so you can do this and improve one of them to see if it has the potential to rank even better than it did when you originally posted it. We want to keep an eye out for what's just not working in the article. Think of yourself as the original searcher. What is the problem that you are trying to solve for them? What do they need from the article? And go section by section and just see what is not really necessary. What is extra fluff in the article and consider maybe just removing that. Yeah, I think this is a, such an important thing to remember. The searcher intent is going to help you really know if you're on track with the article. As Anne alluded to, there are some sections in this article that are just not on point. But as we go through and work through this article, we're gonna be looking for those things as we fix up other parts. Okay, the article we're looking at is called Salad Fork versus Dinner Fork. They're actually quite different. Now, we're gonna be talking about here in this section, improving the structure of the article. This is one of the first steps that we're gonna take in this auditing process because the layout and structure of the article can make a really big impact when Google goes to index the article and helping Google to understand what the article is talking about. So in this article, we're gonna first look at the subheading order. And you could do this with your articles too. So the first subheading in this article is how dinner and salad forks are different. I think that's really appropriate since that really covers the kind of the topic, the main query that we're covering here in the article. Something else we wanna look for is subheading clarity. Now this is one where I think that the writer didn't do a great job uh, because there's a subheading here that's what course to use a dinner fork in, but then later on, they have another subheading that is when to use a salad fork versus when to use a dinner fork. Mm. So it's almost the same two subheadings, but one's like the second subheading at the top and one is the final subheading at the bottom. I think that we probably could have been a little more clear there. Maybe that's something we consider kind of combining yes, because they are definitely. so similar. This might confuse the reader if they're going through because they might be like, wait, what? Did we already touch on that? But maybe only half of that. And so that's really something that you might want to restructure. So this is something that we talk about a lot, but it is so, so important. I cannot express the importance of this step and that is original research. So in this original article, there really is no original research and we're not blaming the writer in any way. They only have a set amount of time and it's not a lot of time but if we were to do this ourselves which we are by the way we could add something like some tables some graphs obviously some original photos uh, we could pull somebody maybe in one of our Facebooks or maybe even reddit and see if they actually know the difference between these two forks and just kind of add that extra kind of fun information we are actually going to be filming a video about this and taking some original for photos we have the different kinds of forks so we're gonna be doing that research our, ourselves but we're gonna make it super easy we're going to film just a very short video with our phones and just a little stand and show you how easy it can be original research is so key for articles I think for all the reasons you just mentioned but 
just think about when you do research, you get data. And the data is what makes your article linkable. If someone else is doing research for their article or they want to cite something, if you have original data in your article, they're going to link to you, which is going to help build your authority in the space. Um, I also think that original research is what makes writing articles fun. Um, writing itself isn't always that exciting, but when you actually get to do a fun project in conjunction with the article, then it feels like you're actually adding value to the internet and you're not just you know, skimming other articles and finding the best information there. It really makes a big difference. You really feel like you have a big part in writing the article. You know because you actually performed the research and yeah, you're not just taking bits and pieces from the internet. That doesn't help the searcher in any way as well. Video content with articles. This is something that we've been recently working on more and more and as Google wants to see more forms of media in articles, this is one that becomes increasingly important. Video content will really help the reader understand not just visually from text but they're actually going to be able to see the explanation or maybe you're showing how to do something. It makes the article so much more valuable. Anna mentioned earlier that we were going to go film a video for Forks and trying to figure out what the difference is between a dinner fork and a salad fork. I think maybe we should go film that video now. All right, so the reason you're probably watching this video is because you're wondering the difference between a salad fork and a dinner fork. Notice the size difference. In some of the research we did, we found out that there are some very fancy mm -hmm. salad forks that actually have a larger tine on one of the sides with a good cutting edge. Generally speaking, if you're at a fancier dinner and you're not sure what utensil to use when, just work from the outside in. And so that's a good rule of thumb to use. <laughs> Did you want me to keep talking? <laughs> All right, so we just came back from filming the video and you see how easy that was. We didn't make a big deal out of it. We didn't do a bunch of angles, a bunch of different shots or post editing or anything like that. It doesn't need to be over complicated. What we also did at the same time was shot some original photos because we already had the props, we had the forks, we had the camera, and so might as well because that's an important piece. We didn't even really use extra added crazy lighting and we didn't mean to make the photos look perfect. In fact, it actually is kind of good when yeah. they look somewhat amateur because it looks to the reader like a real person is doing this and they did the research themselves. Also, if you take a photo, Google is going to recognize that that is an original photo and it's not just a stock photo, which helps your credibility as well. It doesn't have to look amazing. The video doesn't have to be spectacular, but the value is so huge if you can just upload it to YouTube and then embed it on your, on your blog post. We alluded to early on that we were gonna cut out a chunk of this article and we're finally to that part in the article where we've identified a section that really is just irrelevant. The writer really didn't understand the searcher's intent and so they wrote a whole section about history of forks. <laughs> And it's kind of funny as we read through it, we're talking about, you know, forks in the 18th and 19th century. The reader who is wondering what the difference between a salad fork and a dinner fork, they're not wondering about 18th century forks. They really, they may be attending an event or they might be putting on an event where they are going to want to know the difference. They really probably don't care about the history. So we're gonna chop out this entire subheading and we're gonna replace it with something that's a lot more relevant. As we did some research about forks, we actually found out that there are some differences today versus a long time ago. So it might not be bad to include a little bit of that information, but it's not relevant enough to create a whole subheading on. We're gonna use Google Search Console to identify a portion of this article or a related topic that's actually being searched a lot. And we're gonna include a subheading based on that topic. So we're gonna chop out, you know, it's like five or six paragraphs here and we're just gonna replace it to make this whole section of the article much more relevant. All right, another thing that can really help your EAT expertise authoritativeness and trustworthiness is placing these articles into categories. Now we really do recommend having at least about 10 articles per category and that way you just really show to Google that you're kind of an expert in this area. So for us, if we added a category that this article could go into, it could be something like entertaining for large groups and that could entail etiquette and just the details of what you should know if you are either attending a party or you are entertaining for a certain amount of people. And then the last really big part is interlinking, which we've talked about again so much, but we really want 
want you to know it's really important. And so what we can do is interlink to other related articles that the searcher or the reader <laughs> rather would want to know about. So for example, we've got this fork article, but we also have a spoon article which talks about the difference between a soup spoon and a bouillon spoon. And so someone who may be attending an event and never attended a fancy event like this might want to know what forks and what spoons are what and what do I use them for? And then something we can also do is maybe create a bigger article just about party, event, etiquette, and everything you need to know about every place setting, all of the plates, the, the bowls, you know, the glassware. And so that way you have this giant resource and you can link out to these other smaller articles. The topical authority that this is going to bring to you and your website is going to be really important. Now more than ever, Google is focusing on sites with topical authority, with eat, um, they want to see that the websites that they are ranking on the first page of Google are actually really good websites. And so the interlinking, the, the categorization, all the things that we've talked about are super, super important. This whole process that we've been doing, this audit process, is something that we found to be really helpful with our articles, helpful enough that we want to offer it to you. If you go to contentwarrior.com, you will find that we are offering content auditing services. Um, this is an opportunity for us to look over your articles and to essentially do what we've done with this article, to go in depth and to find out exactly how good your article is and if it's going to be something that's going to do well on Google. So if you're interested in that, head over there and hopefully you found something valuable here today. And even if you don't want someone else to audit your articles, feel free to use this process and audit or edit your own articles because taking that overhead look, that, that approach is really gonna help you improve your content. Thank you.